Hi everybody, I'm going to give you an instructional video on how to tie all the knots for your ski strap in this week's teen activity kit. So you'll have a long piece of red webbing, a shorter piece of black webbing, and one buckle. So for now we can set the black webbing and the buckle aside and take the long webbing and what we're going to what we're going to end up doing is tying two loops on either end. So this first knot is going to be called, or the two knots that we're, that we're tying in the red webbing are called overhand knots on a bite. And a bite is just a fold of rope or webbing. So we'll take the webbing and fold it so that we have a, a good amount so that our loop ends up pretty big. Because this big loop, we are going to want to be able to fit over the tail of our skis. So you'll just... Fold it over and tie a regular old knot, which is actually called an overhand knot. Ta-da! And you can pull it really tight. This little, this little bit here is called a tail, so you want to have enough tail that the tail doesn't slide through and the knot comes out. So this is probably a big enough loop. It'll fit around most skis. If you have twin tips or something like that, you might want to measure out a little bit better and, and make your loop a little bit bigger. But you can just really pull it tight and get your knot nice and dressed. A properly dressed knot means there's no twists or turns and it looks really good. So that's our first loop. And then we'll just go down to the other end and this loop needs to be a lot smaller because it only really needs to be big enough for the black webbing to slide through, okay? And it's because the webbing is so thick, it is a little bit difficult to tie a, a good knot, but we'll see what we can do here. Nope, I need to make it a little bit longer. So, you know, kind of the length of my hand from, from uh, pinky to thumb if I give a shaka. Um, and you can, once you get it through, you can sort of work it to a little bit smaller loop just by wiggling stuff around and whatnot. But I'm just tying a regular old overhand knot anyhow. And I got to grab my tail and really pull it through so that it, so that it stays nice and tight. And if you want and you have like a pole or a table leg or something, you can slide that in and really pull it tight. So there's that, just two overhand knots on a bite and you're all set with your red webbing. The next step is gonna just be to slide this through so that it's just through the loop and it can, it can slide pretty good. And what we're gonna do is called an overhand follow through. So this one, you'll tie a regular overhand knot and you wanna keep quite a bit of tail on your webbing. And what we're gonna do now is unbuckle the buckle. We just need to take one end of it and before we do the follow through, we put the, the webbing through the buckle, fold it down, and follow through means you just follow the path of the knot. So we can just slide this along the, the knot of the webbing that's already in, and so it goes like that. It loops around, so we're kind of on the inside, so it goes around like that, and then down. And this is where dressing your knot becomes really important because you want it to look good. So there we have it. We got enough little tail here that it's not gonna slip out and we can pull it really tight. And now we have our buckle on a knot on a loop. And we'll do the same exact thing 
on the other side. So we'll start by tying a knot. Tying a knot. And then we'll have this pass through our buckle and then we'll follow through. So it goes through like that, underneath and behind. And it's really easy to just kind of slide it since this is flat. It's a little trickier with a round rope. Oh no. Oh, I guess the other way to do it is to have your bite with your buckle on it and just tie a knot like so. So it's just another overhand on a bite like we did with the red, but you want to make sure that you have your buckle there and then it can clip together. So, in order to use this on your skis, you'll take the big loop, slide it over the tails of your skis so that it gets stuck by the binding, and then clip this around anywhere above your binding. Just clip it. And then you have your strap, you can put it on your shoulder or over your shoulder so that you can go hiking. If you're a snowboarder, you can still use this. The instructions will be the same to tie all the knots. And what you'll do instead is make sure you're Bindings are folded down. You'll do what's called a girth hitch with the big loop. So you'll slide it through and then take the other end, the black end, and put it through the loop like that so that it cinches down on your binding, on the heel piece of your binding. And then this can just clip through the other one and same deal. And you can throw it over your shoulder and get hiking. If you're a snowboarder, you might want to make this a little bit shorter so it doesn't bop, bounce around as much, but there you have it.